Should we buy or sell immersion? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. So I have this theme under the megatrends called we are and AR slash holograms. Of course, do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing, of course. So here is immersion. Okay, so they deliver haptic feedback. Uh, that is their area of expertise. And haptic feedback is definitively something that is very, very important for VR and augmented reality and also holograms. Um, so we are 10% here from the 52 week low and we are minus 50 ish percent away from the highs. So we have definitively seen a very ferocious bear market. Here is at the company's uh, website, the digital experience is better with haptic technology, real, immersive, and more appealing. Haptics adds value to the experience. We are here to help you benefit from all that haptics has to offer. So they, del they deliver it for the automotive industry, uh, for gaming, and also for mobile. So yeah, a world full of touch. Yeah, our goal is to enable touch everywhere in the digital world. So 150 plus licensed customers, 3 billion devices using our technology. Uh, PS5 Dual Sense positive feedback has sparked interest in haptics. Yeah, um, so this is definitively going to be huge. Uh, the uh, you know the challenge of being being uh, in the financial market is that. Uh, um, if you if you want to be part of the big moves, bullish moves, you get you must get in early, uh, and the same thing also comes with um, being a bear. Uh, it it's not a good idea to start selling a stock uh, when you have like a new low. Like let's say that you shorted the stock here because you had like, you had like a breakdown below these lows, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm going to short, short here. That's very dangerous because all of a sudden you can get these very ferocious moves. So you could gain 25%, but potentially a worst case scenario lose approaching 200%. So yeah, that, that's just the way the market works. And so this is uh, the long term history of this stock. And we do see that uh, there are time cycles. The challenge with the time cycles is that they have differed in duration, as you can see over time. Uh, but there seems to be something time cycle-ish here about uh, this uh, stock. There's been smaller time cycles, they've been larger. Uh, if we take these time cycles as an example here, relevant, 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 relevant. So it does suggest that there's a rising phase here um, in development. Uh, you could also make a pretty decent uh, case. Okay, let's uh, get some lines that we do have horizontal support. Okay, that's a big arrow, but it, it does the trick. So support back here. Uh, here is a bit of a cluster of support levels. Here are some, some key support levels. And here, so um, that could help uh, the bulls form uh, a low. Looking at you know the daily data points, uh, we do see the time cycles pretty clearly. And we do have something that is uh, a bit tepidly rounding bottomish happening uh, now, so that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, we are, however, below a lot of important moving averages, and it is pretty clear here that the blue 100-day moving average. So let me draw that in. It is a very key uh, resistance level, so it is a place where the bears like to put on short positions. Uh, the thing is that we are at a very low level, so this is this is a level that is. Sure, you could short the stock at these kinds of levels, but it's also very dangerous uh, to be short at lows. Uh, if you look at these other indicators, uh, so there's been some improvements here on the MACD. Um, in terms of uh, the RSI and the PPOs, we are at low levels that have formed longer term lows in uh, the past. If you look at this key low here, uh, which uh, formed the beginning of um, the previous rising uh, part of of a time cycle. Time cycle. We did have some similar readings on the PPOs and the RSI that we have now, but not exactly the same, of course. But similar-ish. Uh, looking at accumulation and distribution, um, you know there seems to be a bit more stable battle here between sellers and buyers. So that's initially interesting. 
from a, a more bullish uh, perspective. Uh, in terms of the RSI and the PPO, um, we are at the low-ish uh, levels, but we have been lower in the past. So uh, when it comes to immersion, uh, I think that the line in the sand is that we have horizontal, okay, horizontal support. And in terms of the longer term radar, we do have time cycles uh, and we now have a bullish, bullish uh, face, um, you know, on the herd that, that, that we currently are a part of, frankly. So in terms of giving the technicals a rating, um, the thing is that we also have that initial rounding-ish bottom pattern. So there are multiple reasons to be a bit bullish. But I, I I want to be a bit conservative here, so I think I will give the bulls, um, yeah, I give them a two. Uh, the pr primary reason why I am being very conservative about the technicals is that we have seen recently that many mega trends, mega trend stocks have hit you know very important support levels, but then they don't get sufficient backup from the bulls, and then you have this effect, effect where the technicals fail. And that is going to create a situation where the people who buy megatrend stocks are going to buy less uh, going forward because they got burnt. So I, I think that it makes sense then to sort of adjust uh, this course uh, a bit. But overall, the technicals are bullish. It's, it's just that we have seen this um, uh, deterioration uh, among uh, the bulls. Okay, so here is the seasonality. So to the right here, we do see um, that uh, the, the average seasonality is uh, rather bullish, uh, he heading towards uh, later June. So seasonality definitely bullish. Uh, looking here to the left over the last five years. Uh, then we do see the seasonality data just in a different way. So both of these are very important. The average is has a smoothing effect. Looking here to the left. Uh, we do see that, you know, this is the percentage of months in which it closes higher than it opened, and it is only 40 for April. But the average gain is 2.4%. So the average 2.4, average 3.6%. But you see here in May that it only closes higher 25% of the time. So that is why I think it is very important to combine these two different ways of looking at seasonality. Over the last 10 years, we do see that April is a 50-50 month, but overall it is, it is a bit bullish. But the June and July are, you know, the clearly bullish months. But then we go big picture. And then it becomes rather interesting because we do quite clearly see that uh, from March uh, towards um, June, July, the seasonality does increase in strength. So it becomes more and more bullish. So uh, the seasonality here for immersion, it is certainly uh, bullish, um, but as we saw, it's not like uh, like a very high percentage of uh, times that you know the the month closes higher than than it opened. But I do think that you know it makes sense to give the bulls uh, a three on the seasonality. Next, we will look at the fundamentals. So here is the data from Sachs. Okay, so a number three hold. But a whopping A value, C growth, and A momentum. And these are extremely good scores for a high tech stock. You know, d d immersion, they make haptic feedback. This is not like a consumer staple. This is high tech, and these style scores are really good in that context. Industry rank, bottom 8%, obviously not exactly bullish. When we go a bit further down here, we do see that the market cap is very, is very small 165 million, million US dollars. Uh, when we go here to the insiders and look at what they are doing, sell, 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 buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, 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 buy. So we see that in 2022, the current year, there's been more buying than uh, selling, and that is uh, that is uh, bullish. When we look here at consensus estimates, uh, then we do see that there's. Only one analyst here covering uh, the stock. Uh, so we do see it there here in 20 2021, Collier's Securities downgrades immersion to neutral from buy. So let's look here at Finvis. Uh, they do have um, yeah that rating from Collier's. 
Uh, so the current price of the stock is a re is four point ninety two, well five ish dollars, and, and we do here see that some of the previous price targets a bit old, but this is from twenty twenty, fifteen dollars, twelve dollars, nine dollars, twelve, thirteen. So uh, the price targets are significantly higher than the current stock price, um, sometimes over double. So uh, implying you know a potential one hundred percent upside. That's, you know, bullish. Uh, so I think that I, I will give the fundamentals here uh, a solid five. Um, yeah, maybe actually, yeah, no, I think I will stop with a five. Uh, I would like to see uh, more recent price targets because there's a pretty significant amount of uh, people who look at fundamentals who are very, uh, they are very influenced by price targets. So if the price targets are old, then they're not going to commit the same amount of money, money to work that they would if they both have recent SACS rankings and uh, recent price targets. But the five is, you know, good. Then we have relative performance. So here is an emission uh, and there's a, a minus 5% uh, correlation with the S&P 500. 25% positive with the small caps ETF, then 47% here with ARKK, you know, Kathy Wood's innovation ETF, and minus 56% with the dollar index. Looking at daily data points, 18% positive now with the S&P 500, 81% with small caps, 89% here with ARKK, and minus 75% here with um, the dollar index. So what happens with the Kathy Woods ETF? The ARK K is going to have the biggest impact on this stock. So let's here look at the weekly data points. So ARK K is trying to find a low. You see that here we did get a bit of a rally, but it's failing. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Uh, you could well we do have a buy signal here on the MACD, so that's interesting, but. Uh, the bulls do have a lot to prove, uh, given that they, uh, you know, they made a lot of progress. So looking here on the daily data points, so we got above the purple twenty-day moving average, which which was a key resistance level. Then we got above the green fifty-day moving average, another you know key resistance level. But now we have fallen below all the moving averages. So the inability of the bulls to use the 20 day moving average as a support level, that is simply not good. And that's, you know, the thing, uh, bulls are supposed to, to buy at the support. And when they fail to buy at support, meaning there were more sellers than buyers, uh, that is a pretty strong uh, signal. Um, okay. So here we have the relationship between immersion and arc K. And we have a pretty nice rounding bottom. That's a bullish technical pattern. It means that there is an increased probability that immersion will outperform ARK K going forward. This is a nice rounding bottom. Um, we did see that there was uh, recently at an attempted breakout. So let me draw that in. This is also one of the reasons I'm not too keen on trading breakouts because you see that here the bulls really tried, but uh, you know it's it's not that easy to have a breakout in like one go. Uh, usually you need to have multiple attempts. Uh, the the problem is that if you continually wait for breakouts, you can miss some big big moves from this low here to this high. You see that there was you know a seventy um, yeah two percent outperformance here from for emission. Okay, let's look here at the seasonality. Um, yeah, so over the last five years here, we do see that immersion tends to underperform ARK K uh, significantly here towards August. Uh, okay, so now let's compare R ARK K, K with the S and P five hundred. Yeah, um, uh, we did have the potentiality of, for of forming some horizontal support. Uh, against these lows, but we are below them now. So these lows back here are very likely going to be resistance uh, going forward. Yeah, from a technical perspective, this is this is just um, a very messy setup because on the one hand, 
we do have a breakdown below some key lows and you could of course use that as a signal to go short but if i were to, to like go bearish i would ideally want to see a reject a rejection from these uh, resistance levels because we currently are so close to the lows that you need to have you know you certainly can't have like a big position if you're going to like uh, trade uh, moves that are in development because that is what hap what's happening now um, the good you no know, time um, to you know to um, go short this pair would be like here you know where we have a double bottom and those who did that they are sitting on profits but if you are like going short here you don't have the buffer that these guys uh, up here have so that's just something to be aware of whenever you put on a trade is that you where is your stop and where is you, do you do, will you do you have a buffer or not you know that's that's very important anyway so here is the relationship between these two and we do see that the seasonality is very strong here towards uh, the 20th of July so RKK tends to outperform the S&P 500 going forward so Imagine is forming a huge uh, rounding bottom against the RKK, that's bullish. The S&P 500 um, seasonally tends to underperform the RKK going forward. So I do think that uh, this is reasonably uh, bullish. I think I, I think I will, what, not up there. I will, okay, so let's remove that. I will give the bulls a five here. So we do end up uh, with an average score here of 3.8. So the data is more favorable of bullish uh, trades than bearish. The big key thing for this bullish thesis is that horizontal support must hold. And also um, we need to see the continuation of the bullish time cycle. So there should now be, should be clear bullish momentum. If there's any sign of that not um, uh, playing itself out, then, then that is obviously an issue. Uh, so yeah, whatever you do, of course, you want to use stops and uh, uh, be market neutral as usual.